we actually become such a, a light, such a, a positive, productive version of ourselves that we can't help but rub off on every person that we come in contact with. I personally think the greatest gift we can give to those that we love and those that we lead is to fulfill our potential. This is the Real Estate Podcast. Uh, thank you very much for joining. We're, we're really excited about having you on, man. Alex, it, it is an honor. Again, we were just talking about uh, our friend that introduced us, Justin Donald. And so Justin's had uh, nothing but great things to say about you guys. And you said the same. It was about me. So, you know, looks like we're in for a, a, good, uh, a good time. <laughs> That's right. Well, and uh, Matt will be back here in a minute, um, but we've actually, you know, told a lot of people about this podcast that we're recording right now coming up and uh, everybody's excited to see it come out. So this is going to be a big one and, and we're really honored to have you on. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate that very much. Well, um, you know, I actually have not read the, the Miracle Morning. Um, oh, this but, interview's over. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but I've been told a lot about it and, and I actually... Uh, from the little I do know about it, um, you know, practice a lot of those daily principles in my life and have for the last five years. Um, but, you know, if you don't mind, I guess that's a great place to start. Um, you know, is the Miracle Morning and, and kind of, um, you know, talking about that book and, and why you wrote it and, and kind of your experience with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That yeah, the Miracle Morning has really become my life's work. So I, I um, I'm, I'm, I'm all about sharing it with as many people as I can. Um, yeah, the, the, way, the way it came about, it was not a book idea. Uh, in 2008, when the US economy crashed, my business kind of crashed with it. I was a coach. So I was coaching salespeople and entrepreneurs and business owners. And, you know, when the economy crashed, over half of my clients couldn't afford to pay their coaching anymore. And so I lost half my clients and therefore half my income. That was my only source of income at the time. And uh, it was a six month kind of downward spiral where couldn't pay the mortgage, had my house foreclosed on by the bank. Uh, lived on credit cards where I went from being debt free to having uh, $52,000 in personal credit card debt, you know, after those six months. And um, I, I had canceled my gym membership and tripled my body fat percentage and was just really in the worst shape of my life physically, financially, mentally, emotionally, and really started to get depressed because as the I went from being very optimistic in the beginning to, man, things are getting worse and worse and worse. And, and I don't know how to make them better. And some advice from a friend of mine, John Berghoff, uh, one of my best friends, he said, Hal, are you exercising every day? And I go, what, what the hell does that have to do with anything I, you know, that, that I'm dealing with right now? Like, I, I, I need to make money. I need to pay my bills. I need to save my house, you know? And he said, uh, if you're not exercising every day, Hal, you're not putting yourself in a peak physical state and a peak mental and emotional state. And he said, you're just going in your, in your office, depressed, in a scarcity mindset, if you don't get better first, you're not going to be able to get, turn your life around and make things better. And I was like, okay, so you're saying I should, I should go exercise every day that's going to magically change things? He goes, no. He goes, every morning, go for a run. And he said, while you're on that run, listen to some self-help. Listen to an audio book on you know, getting clients, building your business, like whatever area of your life you need to improve, listen to an audio book while you're in that peak state. And he said, and then run straight home and implement something that you learned. And this, it just seemed too simple and too non-specific. And I'm going, you know, uh, I'm desperate. I, you know, I got nothing to lose. I'll give it a try. And the next morning I went for a run and I hated running, by the way. Like it was a, it was a, a run is, is generous. It was like a slow jog walk, you know? And, uh, but I heard a quote on the first, the first day that became the catalyst that changed my entire life faster than I ever thought possible. Uh, and it's what led to the miracle morning. And the quote from it was from Jim Rohn. And Jim Rohn said, your level of success in every area of your life will rarely exceed your level of personal development. And he went on to say, and that's because success is something that you attract by the person that you become. 
And so when I heard that, and, and I might have heard it before, but it hit me in a different way that morning and I quantified it. I went, okay, if my level of success will rarely exceed my level of personal development, let, let me assess both of those. What level of success do I want? And I think if we're honest, on a scale of one to 10 in every area of our life, it's pretty safe to say that everybody wants level 10 success, right? Level 10 health, level 10 financial success. We want to make, you know, on a scale of one to 10, the impact in the world. Human beings have this innate drive and desire to make life and experience the best that life has to offer. But this was the gut check. I went, okay, so I want level 10 success in every area. What level is my personal development in each area of my life? And if I was honest, and I think this is true for most people, it was like a two or a three, you know, like my, my knowledge in business was like, you know, a two or a three relative to what, what knowledge was available, right? In terms of my relationship with my wife, I wasn't reading books on how to have a great marriage or a great relationship, you know? And so I realized that that's the disconnect for me. And it was for me and it is for most people is we all want level 10 success. But if we're honest about our level of knowledge, our beliefs, our habits, our discipline, if they're not at a level 10, that's the disconnect. If we're at a three or four or even a five, but we want level 10 success, our level of success will always parallel who we have become. Mm -hmm. And so that epiphany, I went, okay, I'm going to go figure out, I'm going to create the most effective, the ultimate personal development ritual so that I can quickly become the person that I need to be that is able to create and sustain the success that I want in my life. And so I went home and I just started Googling random phrases, like, like the, the best personal development practices in the world. And, you know, and what do millionaires do for personal development? And, and what do world champions, what is their personal development routine? Like I just, just was Googling it from every angle and I was looking for the best practice. And I ended up with a list of six practices and I got overwhelmed because I went, well, I can't do all of these. And none of them were new, by the way. It was just the, the practices that the world's most successful people in all walks of life have sworn by for, you know, centuries. Uh, meditation, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, journaling, like nothing new. But if you study the world's most successful people, you usually find that they attribute their success to at least one of these practices. So I wanted to figure out the best one. But none stood head or shoulders above the rest. And so the real epiphany was when I went, wait a minute, what if I did all of these? What if I woke up tomorrow morning an hour earlier, even though I wasn't a morning person, it, that was the big hurdle for me and it is for a lot of people. Um, but I thought, what if I woke up an hour earlier and I just did 10 minutes each of the six most timeless proven personal development practices? I thought that would be not just, not just one, but the ultimate ritual. And I woke up the next morning, I was excited to try this. And I felt incredible, even though I sucked it up on all of them. Like I have never meditated before at that time in my life. I had never done affirmations. They felt really goofy, but even doing what you might call a mediocre morning, these six practices after one hour, I felt hopeful. I felt optimistic. I felt empowered. I felt confident. I thought if I do this every single day, it is inevitable. It is only a matter of time that I become the person that I need to be that's capable of creating everything I want for my life. And, and to kind of tie a bow on the story, um, I was thinking this would be like a year, you know, like, okay, the compound effect, get a little bit better every day. Maybe in one year, I'll see a transformation. In less than two months, in a declining economy, I more than doubled my income. And I didn't change careers. I just figured out, I got the confidence, I got the clarity, and I gained the knowledge to double my coaching practice, even though the economy was crashing. Um, my, my, I was physically in the worst shape of my life. In those two months, I committed to run a 52 mile ultra marathon and I started training for it. And I ended up completing it like six months later. And my depression went away on day one because I was so optimistic and, and I felt so empowered. And so I went to my wife, I said, sweetheart, I just signed on two more clients today. We officially are earning the most income we have ever earned in our lives, double what we were earning two months ago. I go, it's all this morning routine. It feels like a freaking miracle. And she looks at me and she goes, it's your miracle morning. Just kind of in jest. And I go, yeah, I like that. My miracle, I'm going to call it that miracle morning. So it started going to my schedule as miracle morning. I taught it to all of my coaching clients, almost every single one, except for one. There was one that refused to do it. The rest tried, it was like 13 out of 14 that did it. And they came to their next coaching call going, 
oh my gosh, I wasn't a morning person two weeks ago. Hell, it worked. I'm waking up every day. I have more energy, more motivation, more drive, and I'm seeing the best results I've ever seen in my business, in my sales career, et cetera. And that's when the light bulb went off. And I went, if this changed my life and I wasn't a morning person and it changed their life and they weren't morning people, my clients, I thought this could change anybody's life. And I felt a sense of responsibility to write a book so I could share it with the world. And it took three years. I self-published The Miracle Morning on 12-12-12, December 12, 2012. Um, I, bust, I really believed in it. So I didn't have an audience, but I just worked my butt off and did interviews like this for years. Um, and now it's, you know, it's sold over two and a half million copies and it's translated in 37 languages, like things I never, ever imagined. And I know, Alex, you said you haven't read it yet. There's a movie. There's your shortcut. We, the documentary, The Miracle Morning, just came out on Amazon uh, in December last month. I so saw can, it. You yeah, saw it's great. it? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Oh, that's awesome, man. Well, get Alex on it. So it, uh, that, that's Alex, a shortcut. Um, yeah, I got a question. And, and out, just to give Alex like a little credit, you know, you can maybe talk a little bit, but like he does a pretty good routine every morning. Nice. I, okay. I, I honestly don't. Uh, and I know the importance <laughs> Uh, I know the importance. And I think after talking to you, you're going to, you're going to, uh, give me that energy to start. But my, my question is, uh, you, you seem to have such a good spear and good energy and positivity about this. But at the end of the day, like to me, this is like hardcore and it, it takes a lot of discipline, right? Uh, like w what's the side of you that, that, you know, I guess, does it come down to disciplines, the number one thing here? And for you yourself, like, is that something you struggled with, with maybe falling off and like trying to get back on it and stay consistent because you're, yeah. you're so lighthearted about it, but it's an intense thing. And it sounds so simple, but it, and it is simple, but it's not easy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'll say this, it's easier than you think. And, and here's, but here's the reality. Like that was my biggest insecurity when I was writing the book and, and I almost, it, it took me three years because I kept kind of throwing in the towel going, nobody's going to read this. And if they read it, how, like that was my, again, the insecurity was my limiting belief, if you will. How am I going to convince someone that has believed their entire life that they are not a morning person and now they're 30 or you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. How in the hell am I going to write something in this book that's actually going to get them to overcome that limiting belief of I'm not a morning person and I've tried and I've failed and I just don't like waking up and right. And so the, the, the biggest surprise is I actually, it came a couple of years ago. Somebody asked me in an interview, they said, what percentage of miracle morning practitioners uh, around the world? They said, what percentage of them were already morning people? So this wasn't hard, right? It was just like, Oh, instead of checking my phone first thing or check, instead of watching the news or, or, or going on social media, I'll just do the miracle morning, right? Like I'm already waking up early, no problem, right? So what, what percentage were already in that camp where they were already morning people? And they said, and what percentage, like, like you're saying, were absolutely not morning people. And it was a huge, you know, like, I don't know that I can do this. I don't have the discipline. I've never been able to do it. And I didn't know the answer. And so we surveyed our community, the miracle morning community, and it was 72% said that before they read the miracle morning, they had never been a morning person in their entire life. And that was encouraging because I went, okay, so it's not just morning people. In fact, the morning people are the minority of miracle morning practitioners. It's people that are actually not morning people. And so there's a few reasons for that. I don't believe in making things hard. I've always viewed myself as a lazy person. Um, and I still struggle with that today. Like, my wife will go, sweetheart, you're not lazy. Like you, you know, you do this. She'll like, tell me you do this, 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 you wake up early, you work hard. You know, I'm like, yeah, 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 I guess you're right. But we're, we're all just little kids that got older. Right. So the, that I was a lazy kid. And so that still is in my, my consciousness. It's still part of my belief and my self identity. Right. So for me, it's how can I make it really, really, really easy. And I'll give some of those strategies right now. There's actually a chapter in the miracle morning called the five step snooze proof wake up strategy for the recovering snoozeaholics. It's a very long chapter. Um, but like I always, I said, I'm, I, I'm a recovering snoozeaholic. Like I snoozed every day, you know, as long as I possibly could. And I waited till the last minute to get out of bed. 
And, and before I give you the strategy, I, I want to share this for a second. Think about why you wake up in the morning. Okay. Everybody listening and, you know, and, uh, and, and you guys listening and, and, and everybody uh, and Matt, you, Alex, you, you know, think about why do you wake up in the morning? And, and it's one of two counts. People either wake up because they have to or because they want to. Meaning have to is when you set your alarm at the last possible minute, when you have to be somewhere, do something or answer to somebody else. And that's how most people start their day, right? Yeah. And I joke, you know, you literally set your alarm, like, what's the last possible minute that I could wake up and not like, you know, lose my job, lose my marriage, have my children taken away from me because I don't get them to school, you know? And, and I, call, I jokingly call that, that's your mediocre morning, right? When you wait to the last minute. But think about the energy. Think about the intention and the energy that you're waking up with when the alarm goes off. And we all say we want an extraordinary life, but so many of us, the alarm goes off and you go, oh God, it's morning already. Oh, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want, it's like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Either you do want an extraordinary life and you're going to start every day in alignment with what you say that you want, or you just want it, but you're not committed to it. And you'd rather lay unconscious for nine more minutes and then nine more minutes and then nine more minutes. And then, you know, and then get up in the morning, rush out the door, and, and focus no effort or time or energy and attention on becoming a better version of yourself. That's what the Miracle Morning is in essence. It's simply a daily practice to become a better version of the person you were when you went to bed the night before. And if every day you become better than you were yesterday, your life transforms as a result of you transforming. So, that's the why. That's the like gut check, right? All right, look, either if you want extraordinary life, wake up every day, dedicate time to becoming the person that you need to be to create that life, period. Um, the, here, here's how you beat that snooze button. Number one is you've got to set your intention before you go to bed. And, and there's actually, I wrote a, a, a specific bedtime affirmation when I was first starting out with this. I, I Googled how to beat the snooze button. I put together some strategies in a one page, like it's like a half page document. And I used to keep it on my bedside table. And by the way, you can actually, if you go to, what is it? MyMiracleMorning.com, you can download this. It's one of the bonuses in the book. So you can get ahead of it and you can download the bedtime affirmations. But essentially, whatever intention you have before bed, the last thought you have before you go to bed is usually the first thought you have in the morning. Like think about it. If you go to bed stressed about something, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you go, you're flooded with those, oh God, I got to do this thing today. Think about being a kid on Christmas Eve. You went to bed going, oh my God, it's Christmas tomorrow. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Santa's coming, right? And then what happened as soon as you opened your eyes the next morning, the last thought before bed was, the, oh my God, it's Christmas. Let's do it. If you had an early flight for vacation, like whatever you're thinking about before bed is your reality that you create when you wake up. So I created an affirmation so that every more, every night before bed, I kind of recreated that Christmas Eve experience, but, but not based on events, based on I'm going to wake up tomorrow at this time with so much energy and so much drive and so much discipline. I'm going to jump out of bed, turn my alarm clock off. I'm going to go in the living room. I'm going to do my miracle morning. I'm going to become a better version of myself. And I'm going to go take on the day and create everything I want for my life right? Like when you go to bed with that intention, the alarm wakes you go, Oh yeah, it's time. And you, you jump out of bed, not to face your problems, but to give yourself that gift of that morning ritual. And so that's the, that's the kind of intangible step one is you've got to set your intention before bed. And again, if you go to mymiraclemorning.com, you can download the bedtime affirmations and that it's written for you. Now, step two might be an even more important step and it's it's easier it's very simple you have to move your alarm clock as far away from your bed as you possibly can most people keep the alarm clock within arm's reach and when the alarm goes off they reach over they shut it off with that sometimes without even opening their eyes you know they don't even remember they shut it off they don't even know that it went off maybe the snooze button whatever but most of us keep the alarm within arm's reach and our level of discipline, like to your point, Matt, about discipline, the first few seconds that we wake up, we're still half asleep, right? Or, or mostly asleep. So our discipline, our willpower in those first few minutes, they're slim to none. 
So keeping the alarm clock across the room, you actually have to get out of bed. And now you're full, you're, you're awake, right? You're walking, you go in and, and, and you turn off the alarm. I keep my alarm on my, next to my uh, bathroom sink. And I keep a full glass of water there. And part of my bedtime affirmations is I commit when the alarm goes off, I'm going to walk in, turn it off. I'm going to wash my face. I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to put on my workout clothes. I'm not going back to bed. I'm going to go straight out to the living room. And think about this for a second. Every second that you are upright, every second that you are awake, every minute that goes by while you're awake, it becomes that much easier to stay awake. So with that simple ritual of, okay, I'm going to get out of bed, that's step one. Now you're, you're 10 times more awake when you're, you know, when you're out of bed and upright than you are if you're just reaching over with your arm to turn an alarm clock off. And then when you brush your teeth, every minute that goes by, your body is waking up. And so by the time you've washed your face, brushed your teeth, and then by the way, I drink a full glass of water because by default, and that's actually step three, is drinking a full glass of water because we are dehydrated by default. So if you don't drink water, you're going to feel fatigue. Dehydration and fatigue go hand in hand. So drink that full glass of water, rehydrate, and now you're ready to go to your miracle morning. And on a scale of one to 10, in terms of how awake you are, when the alarm goes off in the morning and you reach over and turn it off, you're like at a one. By the time you've gotten out of bed, brushed your teeth, washed your face, drinking some water, maybe put on some workout clothes, you're probably at least at a five or a six. And it takes much less discipline to stay awake at a five or a six than it does when you're at a one. So that alone is a game changer. That's great, man. Uh, you know, you're preaching to us. I'm, I'm soaking in the energy. You're the, <laughs> you're the master of this technique. And, and uh, you know, I really appreciate it because – it's uh there is a lot of passion that you have to it. Um, you know, personally, like the, I guess a big part of this is the night, right? And I know you said the affirmations, but it probably means going to bed early. Um, like, is, is there a little bit more to that? Cause I guess when you said like morning people, my, my first thought is like, and right or wrong is like, I don't, I don't believe there's morning people or not. It just is what it is. And you're committed to it. And you, you might say you're, you're not a morning person, but it's probably because you're staying up late and that's yeah. really the only reason. So yeah. you have to obviously change that it seems to be a, probably like 50% of the equation to, to wake up affirmations, obviously, but to wake up and feel pretty good in the morning. Yeah. Well, think of it this way. So it does, this is not a radical shift. And, and I'm glad you asked this question because this really will tee people up that are listening uh, if they're like, you know, if they're, uh, I don't know, I, I, you know, I, I like my night routine, et cetera. I don't want to do this radical shift and become a morning person. Um, think of it this way. Go to bed 30 minutes earlier and wake up 30 minutes earlier. Like what are most of us, most of us at 11 o'clock, midnight, 1 a.m. aren't doing things. Most of us aren't doing things that are really enriching our personal development enabling us to become a better version of ourselves, we're usually watching Netflix, right? We're usually on our phone. We're usually online. So if you really want to create the life that you really want to create, if you're really committed to it, it's as simple as go to bed 30 minutes earlier to wake up 30 minutes earlier. That's it, right? That's it. It can be that simple. Um, and so trading in that time or go to bed an hour earlier if you want a full hour. When I speak on the Miracle Morning, I usually give two or three speeches a month. And, you know, I go to companies or organizations, whomever, and uh, it's almost always because the leader of that organization, the CEO, read the Miracle Morning, and then they're doing it, and they're like, you've got to bring this to our people, you know, it's changing my life, I want, it, I want them to experience this. And at the end of the speech, I always give a 30-day challenge, and it's really simple. So the Miracle Morning 30-day challenge is wake up 30 minutes earlier, you can do an hour if you want, but again, Set yourself up for success by, by the less the change, the easier to follow through, right? So 30 minutes, not that big of a difference. Wake up 30 minutes earlier, do at least one of the six practices. And we can actually, if you want, we can dive into what those are a little bit more, but they're, they're represented by an acronym, which is SAVERS, S-A-V-E-R-S. -E the first S is for silence. That's your meditation and or your prayer time, starting your day in quiet. So you can gain that wisdom. You can hear yourself think. And that's when your best ideas emerge. That's why they call them shower thoughts, right? When you're in the shower, you know, you're usually not watching TV. You're not in your computer. You're not, you know, you're just in the shower. And you have usually your best ideas, right? You have time to think. 
And, and in today's society, many of us do not take any time during the day for that peaceful, purposeful silence. Often we're just, we're up in the morning, right on the phone, right? We're doing something all day long. And then at night we, got, we get home, TV's on, right? Like literally there's no time. And that's why our best ideas, they come when we're falling asleep at night and we're in silence. When we're exercising and we're in silence, when we're in the shower and we're in silence, right? So the first practice is that it's silence and it could be meditation. Again, it could be prayer. It could be a combination of both. The A is for affirmations and affirmations are simply written statements that remind you that reinforce something that you deem to be important. Affirmations have been taught throughout the years in this goofy way, like just pump yourself up. I'm awesome. I'm amazing. I'm wealthy. Like you're just, you're taught, just tell yourself whatever you need to believe to, you know, like if you want to be rich, just tell yourself you are rich. If you want to, if you want to be thin, just tell yourself you are thin, right? Lying to yourself doesn't work though. That's not like, we know the truth. So if you say, I am a millionaire, your subconscious is like, no, you're not, you know, like, bro, you're not even a thousandaire. Come on, you know? <laughs> so um, anyway, so the A for affirmation is just written statements that affirm something like I'm committed to doing this thing to achieve this result today, right? Like affirm what you're committed to, not some delusional fantasy that isn't yet true. The V in savers is for visualization. Uh, the E is for exercise. You don't have to go to the gym in the morning, but you should do five or 10 minutes of exercise. Do some jumping jacks, some push-ups, some sit-ups, go for a walk, go for a jog. My favorite form of exercise, I just ride my bike around the neighborhood for 10 minutes every morning, right? I get fresh air. I get oxygen. I get sunshine. It feels great. Um, the R in Sabres is for reading, right? You're one book away from learning anything you need to learn to change any area of your life. You want to be happy? There's a book for that, right? You, you want to improve your marriage? There's a book for that. You want to be wealthy? There's a book for that, right? Any area of your life where you're one book away. Uh, and then the last S in Sabres is for scribing, which is for a, a fancy word for journaling or writing. But I, I needed an S at the end of the acronym because the J wouldn't have, it would have been weird. Saber jump. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so those are the six practices of the Miracle Morning. And the 30 day challenge is you can do all six if you want, but you don't need to just do one, just do one, get the habit, get a quick win. And a lot of people, by the way, if they've never read the miracle morning book, all you, all they'll do is their, their miracle morning, their 30, 30 day challenge starts by waking up 30 minutes earlier and doing the R right. They just read the book. And then when you get to the chapter on silence, and you learn about meditation and how to make it really simple and integrate it into your, in your morning, you can add that in. Then you get to the chapter on affirmations and you add that in. And so it's like, you just start by waking up a little earlier and doing some reading. That's not that hard. You can even listen to the audio book if you want, right? Just lay in bed. I mean, I encourage you to get out of bed because you're going to fall asleep if you're in bed. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, the last thing I'll say on this is the... Um, Oh, Robert Kiyosaki. You guys know who Robert Kiyosaki is, I'm, I'm guessing, right? Mm -hmm. Author, rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. He's one of the biggest advocates of the Miracle Morning. I, I, I got to speak at an event. I was like his warm-up act when he was keynoting at an event a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a signed copy of the book thinking like, he's never going to read this. You know, I was like, I, I was this, this nerdy self-published author. Hey, Robert, you changed my life. Here's my book. You know, like, I'm like, he's never going to read this. And three weeks later, his assistant emails me and says, Robert and his wife have read the Miracle Morning three times. They do it every day. It is changing their life and they want to interview you on Rich Dad Radio. And like my jaw dropped. I was like, you're, cause he's one of my favorite authors. You know, I'm like, you're kidding me. This is crazy. So I do the interview and he's just like, He's telling people, he's like, you're, you're a moron if you guys don't do, you know, Robert's got his own style, right? He's like, you got to do this. And, but at the end, he summed this up so well. He said, Hal, and I'm paraphrasing best as I can off memory, but he said, Hal, before the Miracle Morning, before I read the Miracle Morning, he said, I, I'd go as far as to say every successful person on the planet, to almost every successful person on the planet does at least one of the sabers, and they swear by it. He said, a lot of people, they meditate and that's how they get clarity and they, they get their best ideas and they implement them in their business and they build a fortune based on those ideas that they got during their meditation. He said, a lot of them 
you know, they swear by reading. It's the books they read that taught them what they needed to know. You know, he goes, a lot of people, it's journaling affirmations. He said, any one of those practices will change your life. But he said, before the miracle morning or until the miracle morning, I had never met anyone or even heard of anyone that did all six of those practices. Maybe they did one or two, maybe three at the most, but no one did all six. And he said, one of those will change your life. He goes, I really think you named the book correctly, The Miracle Morning, because he goes, I really believe if you do all six, you create miracles in your life, things that you didn't even imagine were possible. And so, um, yeah, I don't remember your question, but hopefully I answered it somewhere. No, there. that's great, that's man. Great. And uh, <laughs> that's that's amazing. And, you know, when you agreed to come on our podcast, my jaw dropped. So we feel, oh, awesome. feel honored. Uh, you know, I... My other question is, because uh, <clears throat> it's easy for someone to do the, to run the sprint and to do this, you know, day one's easy, day two, a little bit easier. But like, what, what percentage of people do you, I don't know if you have any numbers, but like, what is it that, that people fall off? And why is that? Because you, you wake up and you know, you know that you feel good. You know that it worked. You know that life's better. But why do people fall off? Like, how do you avoid that from happening? Yeah, that is a great question. Uh, and by the way, I have fallen off, you know, like I've, I've, I'll go on a vacation. Uh, and by the way, now I do Miracle Morning on my vacation because I, I learned the hard way. I went on vacation, came back, uh, fell out of my routine and it was harder to get back in. I also found, by the way, that on the vacation, when I didn't do the Miracle Morning and I just woke up and, you know, just went into my day. But then the next vacation I did, I went to Cabo and I did Miracle Morning every day my vacation was so much better. There's something special about taking that time for yourself and putting yourself, think about this. You're, you're giving yourself that time to put yourself in a peak physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual state. And I don't care who you are. It feels really good, <laughs> right? To get yourself into that state every morning. And then you're a better version of yourself for your kids, for your spouse, for your company, for your clients, for yourself, right? Like you, you, you're, you're a better version of you. You show up better and you, you, you get more out of the day. So whether you're vacationing or it's a work day or whatever, right? Like that miracle morning time is, it's just, it's crucial. It's precious. Um, so shoot, remind me your question again. No, just, just the, you know, yeah, so oh, why, you fall off. Yeah. 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 Like, like, and, and to, you know, just to put a frame, like, like, you know, how important it is like, why did you fall off on the vacation? Like, what is it that, that causes that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's just, for me, it was like, I'm on vacation, so I'm not going to do it actually. And I'll give you a, a really, a good, a great answer that we've gotten from members of our community. That's kind of a microcosm of what you're asking. And that, a lot of people in the community, and when I say the community, by the way, there, there's two levels of the Miracle Morning community. There's, you know, the two and a half million people that have read the book and millions that are, you know, that are doing it. Every, we, we've estimated it's over a million people that do the Miracle Morning, uh, you know, four or five days a week, right? That's the data that we have. Um, now, I don't have the data specific to what you said in terms of when they fall off or at what point. We're actually building an app so we can try to track that better. Um, but the... Uh, a lot of people ask in the community, and when I say, again, the community, the Miracle Morning Facebook group is, a, is the community I'm referring to. So there's 295,000 members of the Miracle Morning community Facebook group. And I, by the way, that's the third uh, step in the 30-day challenge. I always say, join the Facebook group because then you don't feel alone because it's a lonely thing. You're by yourself, family's asleep. It's really easy to give up on yourself. But when you go into the Miracle Morning community on Facebook and you go, this is, I mean, it's pretty crazy. You, you're, you're inspired by seeing all these people say, I've been doing the Miracle Morning. Today was day 385 or today was day 1290 or I've, you know I mean? And, and I've, I've lost 20 pounds or I'm off my depression medication or I just wrote my first book. Thanks to the Miracle Morning. Like when you see these, it's, it, you go, wow, if they could do it, so could I. And you get to go ask questions and be like, Hey guys, I'm new. Like, what do you do for your affirmations? And then boom, you have 60 people comment in like the first, you know, few hours. So it's this really supportive group. One of the questions that comes up a lot is, hey, do you do the Miracle Morning on the weekends too, or do you take the weekends off? And the answer is almost always the same. And it's collectively the same. Because again, they'll get dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of comments. 
And the answer that I see was the same answer for me, which is the first, when I started the miracle morning, I did it Monday through Friday and I took the weekends off because that's what we do, right? Our society's condition that there's a seven day week, which we made up by the way, there is no seven day week, right? There's just one day after another, after another, like that's a made up concept. Let, let that sink in for a second, right? There's no such thing as a week or a month, you know, anyway. So, um, but the point is, uh, almost everyone will say, I started out doing it Monday through Friday. And then I'd wake up on Saturday and I would just sleep into the last minute. And I felt this, something was missing. This, this, this sense of fulfillment that I had Monday through Friday was absent when I just skipped the miracle morning. So then I started doing it on Saturdays and I woke up an hour earlier than, you know, maybe I, maybe on Monday through Friday, you wake up at 6 AM to get ready for work. So you're waking up at five 30 for your miracle morning. And then on the weekends, maybe you wake up at, you know, normally at nine or 10. So instead you wake up at eight 30 or nine 30, right? So you wake up is again, it's just a little bit earlier, but you do a little meditation. Maybe you don't even do a full miracle morning. Maybe you just do a couple of the savers, right? But the point is, you feel so much better. And Alex, I'm sure you can speak on this. I know you don't do the miracle morning, quote unquote, right? But you do a morning ritual. Like, what is it like for you? I'm curious, when do you, uh, how yeah. often do you do it? What is it like? So uh, I guess the only one of the savers that I haven't, you know, like formally done is the uh, affirmations portion. Okay. But um, I actually got sober uh, five years ago and I was Congrats, told, brother. you know, thank you. And I was told when I got sober that if I didn't pray and meditate in the morning that I was going to get loaded again. Right. And yeah. so that's when that started. Wow. It, and then, um, and I've done that every single day, you know, for the last five years. Um, and then, you know, slowly wanted to, you know, get healthier and healthier. Uh, and, you know, I was working on my spirituality. I was working on my mental health and then started uh, exercising and um at that point in time i wasn't exercising uh in the morning i was doing it after work um but slowly put that into the morning as well and then over the years you know meditation will uh shift a little bit it doesn't always look the exact same and sometimes it'll be you know sitting quietly listening to uh some you know spiritual music and then journaling afterwards right and so that's where the journaling comes in or i'll read 30 minutes before i do the prayer and meditation uh but the three things that I, I do every single day, the three savers that I do every single day, you know, and there's no, uh, you know, negotiating, there's, there's no reason I won't do it. If I have a 5am flight, I wake up at, at 2am to make sure that, that these things, you know, get in to my routine in nice. the morning is uh, the meditation, um, the, the reading and the uh, exercise. <clears throat> And it, and it has changed my life. And I'm honestly kind of tripping out listening to, to you talk about this because uh, I'm glad that somebody took the mission on to, to change the world with this um, because I've tried to talk to, uh, you know, a lot of people about it and I end up just giving up because um, I consider myself a lazy person as well. You yeah. know, I heard David Goggins once say that he's the uh, most disciplined, lazy person he knows. Yeah. And, and I consider that to, to be true for me too. But yeah. Um, it, it has changed my life. I mean, you know, there's, I wake up at about four 30 now. Me too. Then, nice. I love it. And then on the weekends, the gym doesn't open due to COVID. The gym doesn't open until seven. So I wake up around, you know, six or so. Uh, cause that's my routine is wake up the 30 minutes of reading prayer meditation, which is about 15 minutes or so during my pre-workout head straight to the gym. And so, uh, you know, it has to go in that routine for me. Yeah. Um, but you know, it has changed my life and, and I take, you know, a good three, four hours, uh, every single morning for myself and there's no, uh, negotiating on it. Right. Like, uh, I will not, yeah. um, I will not, not do those things for, for any reason. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful, Alex. And I love, I love that Goggins, David Goggins quote that, you know, I'm the most disciplined lazy person because that's it. And I think that's true for anybody. That's what's interesting is I think almost anyone that's disciplined, and I guess I'm just speaking from experience, so I can't speak for others, but, but with Dave, if David Goggins is saying that, I'm like, all right, well, he's probably the most disciplined person that any of us could imagine from the outside. But I, again, I think that we're all, that's, it's an interesting thing about that is if, you're, if you don't think you're disciplined or you're not disciplined, like meaning your actions don't reflect that, um, I think that you feel like being disciplined is some 
foreign thing, like it's out of reach for you. But when you become disciplined, yeah, you realize I'm a lazy person because I don't want to do the things that I'm doing. Like that for me, at least is how I equate it in my mind. Like lazy is my nature. I would much rather not do this thing than do it. And that to me is one of the most important guiding principles in, in my life that I learned from a mentor when I was 19 is, and it's so simple. It's the main one I teach to my kids, do what's right, not what's easy. Or another way I say it is do the right thing, not the easy thing. And so that's that voice in my head. And I've just listened to the voice. Like in the beginning, it was hard. And I'm like, ah, but now it's like default. It's like, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to. So you, you, know, you just kind of, you just condition yourself where, yeah, I'd still rather lay in bed. It's still rather, it's still easier because it's always easier to do nothing than to do the thing. I told my daughter this the other day, I was, because she does the miracle morning with me and she's 11 and we were doing her affirmations. And I said, Hey, I want to talk to you about the one. Cause she has, I wrote them for her. I projected my values onto her, but uh, I'm okay with that. But, but she has one that says uh, I do the right thing, not the easy thing. And then it has a little, like a couple sentences that explain what that is. And I said, Sophie, let me explain something to you. You want to be successful in life, right? However you define successful, sweetie, but you want to be able to live life on your terms, right? Not where you do a job you hate because you have to pay the bills. Don't you want a life of like freedom to do whatever you want with whoever you want that makes you happy? And she's like, yes. I said, okay, the secret is do what's right, not what's easy. And if you develop that ability, you know, at a young age, life will be so much easier for you. And, but here's the point. I said, Sweetheart, I, I want you to, so I want you to realize something. The difference between someone that is successful, however they define it, and someone that wishes they were successful, but they're struggling, they're in a job they hate, life's hard, they're not physically in good shape, they're not as healthy or fit as they want to be. I said the difference is so small. It's the difference between it's doing what's right versus doing what's easy. But I said, I'll give you an example, sweetheart. When I was in sales, I used to be, I sold Cutco Cutlery for six years until I met Justin, right? Our, our mutual friend. Um, I said, uh, I, I became one of the top sales reps in Cutco as a lazy person, right? As a lazy person. Here's what I realized is that the difference between the number one sales rep in all of Cutco or any other company is they, that they picked up the phone and they dialed seven digits and they just did that a bunch of times, right? Maybe 20 or 30 times a day. I go, sweetheart, let me ask you a question. Is it hard to pick up a phone, dial a phone number, and then read a, a pre-written script that someone gave you to schedule an appointment? Is that hard to do? You could do that. Or she goes, doesn't, no, it doesn't sound hard. I go, but, but is it easier to not pick up the phone? She said, yeah. I go, that's literally the difference between someone that's making six figures or more at a, at a sales job and someone that quits and goes back to work at, you know, Walmart or whatever, no offense if you work in a Walmart, but, um, you know, someone that goes and gets, gives up, I go, they weren't willing to do the, the right thing, which was pick up the phone and dial the numbers, you know? And when you, when you think of that example and you can apply it to almost anything, like it's not hard to get on your gym, grab pack a gym bag and go to the gym. Like, it's not really hard. You just get in the car, you go there. When you get there, you get out, you go stand on a treadmill and you walk on it for 20 minutes or whatever, right? It's not that hard. It's just that it's always easier to do nothing than do that simple thing that if you do it repeatedly, it'll change your entire life. And the miracle morning is the same thing. Yeah, that's great, man. Here's something that I struggle with. Um, you know, just being real, G give me some of this knowledge. Like you got it. M mine is just like, and I know this is wrong, but I'm trying to phrase this in my head. Like I'm so committed to, to our work and our business that I wake up and say, I'm, I'm ready to get to work and going to the gym and spending some personal time is just delaying what I think that I, what I'm telling myself that I need to be doing. It's not that I'm not committed to I'm like as committed as I could possibly be to work and so it's like how do I fr and I know this is important yeah. but like I feel like when I'm doing this if I'm going to the gym if I'm doing these other things I'm I'm like taking away from what my actual goal is and I know that's not true yeah does that make sense like it makes it makes a world of sense yeah and, and this um another great question because I think most people or many people can relate to that. And I can relate to that at, at times for sure. Uh, and there are times in my life 
where I would engage in what I call intentional imbalance, meaning like, you know, where I would work more than normal. But I think it's, if you really look at why are we working, right? Why are we working? We're working to make money. Why do we want to make money? So that we have freedom to live life as we want to live life. If, whether that means buying a house so we can live in a home, right? Or it means uh, paying for, you know, some, an assistant so that we don't have to do work we don't want to do. Or whether it means being able to buy healthy food or buy a Ferrari or whatever, like whatever or donate money to charity, right? We're working to earn money, but it's for, it's a means to an end. What is that end? And if you really think about what's important, it's, it's us being at our best, meaning, and you could, you could categorize that as being at our best physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, right? Like if you have all the money in the world, but you are physically, you don't have your health, doesn't matter, right? And how many people, what do they, I forgot, I'm probably going to butcher the quote, but they say something like, you know, the, the man that, you know, that has, I don't know, it's just basically, it's, it's saying that if you don't have your health, that's all you care about, right? And, and as someone who four years ago, I was diagnosed with a rare aggressive form of cancer, and I was given a 20 to 30% chance of surviving, right? Would I give up all the money in the world? And I probably might work in myself to death and taking Adderall in my 20s when I was diagnosed with ADHD because I wanted to be productive because I was addicted to productivity, which many of us are, addicted to success, addicted to financial gain, right? All of those things. That's probably why I got cancer and I almost left. I almost lost my life. And how many people have done that? Because they prioritize work and money over what really matters, which is mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual health. That's why we're, that's what we ultimately want. And so to sacrifice that, right? So, so the answer is in my, in my mind or from my vantage point, um, Matt, is it's, it's just a little bit of balance. So it means that instead of working, you know, how many hours a day do you, do you work on average? To, to be honest, I, I, you know, it's almost probably a problem. I was thinking about it the other day. I honestly think I'm like 16 or 17. Out, like it's 24 seven. So this is beautiful. I'm glad that's the answer. Well, if we're in the short term, I'm glad. Um, I, I don't know if it's sustainable, but I've been there before. But here's the point. Um, instead of working 16 hours a day, what if you worked 15 hours a day and you did one hour dedicated to enhancing, optimizing your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being, right? And, and, and one way to think of it is, and I can tell you from experience, probably Alex would back it up, that you'll be a better, you'll be more effective. Those 15 hours, you'll probably get more done than you would have in 20 hours by taking that one hour. And it's the old sharpening the saw analogy, right? You know, right? The, 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 the two people that were trying to cut down the tree, the old man and the young guy, the young guy just kept chopping away, chopping away, chopping away, chopping away, chopping away. The old guy kept taking breaks and sitting on his stump. And, you know, and the, the young guy didn't know what the hell he was doing. He's like, dude, I'm going to kick his buddies. Why are you taking breaks? And he was sharpening his saw. And, and the old man won because he took that break, those periodic breaks, to get better, to make his tools better for the job at hand. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I could almost promise you, I, you know, I, I put money on the table. Like there's no question in my mind, not only from my own experience, but because I've seen thousands upon thousands of people, you know, over the last 12 years in the Miracle Morning, you know, sphere of influence, the community that, that have said, you know, like this changed my life. I am so much better and more effective at what I do. So that's my sales pitch to you on take that hour, give it to yourself and you're going to be happier. You're going to be healthier. You're going to have more energy, all of those things. And you'll be more effective uh, at, at those, you know, other 15 hours that you're still working. Yeah. Can I, can I say something too? Yeah. Are you open yeah. to it? Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So back to, to house house point here. Um, so 16 hours a day and you say you're, you're so committed to, to the companies and to the work and to the job, right? And I believe that. But uh, my question to you is, is uh, previously there had been like really short stints of doing healthy things, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what's the thing you always say when you're in like day three? Feel great. I love it. Feel yeah. great. I love it. Yeah. I'm more productive. I'm doing better. Yeah. Right. So, so my next question is, is, is it fair to say that during these 16 hours, um, maybe you're, you're not at a hundred percent, maybe you're at 60, 70, maybe sometimes you're at a hundred. Totally. Yeah. Uh, right. And so my third question would be, is it fair to say that if you took that hour, um, you know, 
however long it is, start with an hour Mm -hmm. to do that every single day. Um, You know, the remaining 15 hours, maybe you actually get 15 hours of work done instead of um, let's say 10, because at 10, 15 hours of work, you're at 75%. Yeah, no, I I agree. I totally agree. And and I, I'm all, I just need to hear it from Hal. Give well, that to, let me say this. But let so, me one more thing though. Like I, I've only done real estate since I was seventeen, and so like my, I have this philosophy. Like I could not miss a phone call because that's the client. If I miss the call, then someone else is getting it. Who, so I've oh, always had this framework. That's the only thing I've been. And so I'm on the treadmill, but I'm missing the leads. Who calls you at four a.m.? <laughs> Nobody calls me at four a.m. Oh, well, there you go. But I'm, but I'm, yeah no i hear you like it's i'm not trying to make an excuse i'm just like yeah, yeah. no like, you're just showing your, your internal dialogue which is great yeah 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 and you know it's it's just fascinating because i know that's why i asked you like i know you don't have to explain that it's better i get it I, and yeah. i i just need to do it yeah um, but it's just you know just got to get there i guess so matt so here's what i would encourage you to do i would encourage you to commit to the miracle morning 30-day challenge right wake up 30 minutes earlier do at least one of the savers. You can do more than one if you want. You could read for 15 minutes. And you could also wake up, you know, like I said, I'm setting you up for success. You could do an hour earlier, but keep it simple. Um, but commit for 30 days because I talk about this in the book. Um, I, there's a chapter called From Unbearable to Unstoppable. And it's the idea that the, the, the three, there's three periods, and, and these aren't an exact precise you know, structure, but in general, there's three phases in the midst of a 30 day challenge, uh, 30 days being that, you know, if you want to change any habit, they've shown that if you do it for 30 days and some studies show 21 days, I like 30 days, uh, that within 30 days, if you get over all the humps, right. And it actually becomes something that you're like acclimated to. So it's a lot easier to continue. The first phase is what is I call the, um, uh, days one through 10 is what I call the infatuation phase. Um, it's no, I'm sorry. Days one through 10 are called the unbearable phase. The first few days are called the infatuation phase. It's like a phase within the phase, meaning like when you're excited about something, it's easy to do it. And when the excitement wears off after those first few days, then like you're really tested, right? So some people are like, dude, I'm so excited. You know, my first miracle morning, I was excited, you know, and it stood stood that way for a while. And eventually I was like, oh, now I'm kind of like the infatuation wore off. It's not new anymore, right? So those first 10 days, at some point, you're going to hit what I call the unbearable phase, which is where you go, huh, you know, I I don't need to do this. Why? It'd be easier to go back to the way I've been for the last 20, 30, 40 years, whatever, right? Like, and we talk ourselves into going back to our old patterns if we're not really committed to this new change. So when you're aware that, okay, I'm aware that at some point in those first 10 days, I'm going to feel like quitting. And then it's a matter of, are you committed or are you not? So you make a commitment in writing. I am committed to do the miracle morning for 30 days, right? No matter what. And then make that public, right? Commit to Alex. Commit to the miracle morning Facebook community. Commit to your, like, make that public. Put it up where someone's going to see it so you're not in hiding going, nobody knows I committed so I can let myself off the hook, right? You set yourself up for success when you have some element of accountability. So those first 10 days, though, there's going to be a little bit of unbearable phase within there. You're going to have times where you want to quit and make a decision. I know I'm going to feel compelled to do the easy thing, but I'm committed to do the right thing, which is follow through for 30 days, no matter what. The second 10 day phase is what I call the uncomfortable phase, where it's not unbearable anymore because you kind of got through that. You're like, I'm doing it, but you're still it's not easy yet. It's because you're still the old you. You're the you that you've always been. And this is a new change. That's why change is difficult. Not because it's actually difficult. It's just because it's easier to go back to the way you've always been. And then the third 10-day phase, it's what I call the unstoppable phase. That's where this starts. You start to go, dude, I'm a morning person. Like, this is getting easy. This is fun. Like, I'm not even thinking about it anymore. Like, I'm over that initial inertia. When I was training for my ultra marathon, it was the same thing. The first 10 days, I'm like, oh my God, I hate running. Why am I doing this? I don't want to do this. But I made a public commitment that I was going to run a, an ultra marathon for a charity, the Front Row Foundation. I committed publicly. So I would have looked like a real jerk, right? Like I put my integrity on the line. 
Like, wait a minute, what happened to that charity you were going to run that marathon for? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I didn't, I, I changed my mind, right? Like, so I was accountable. Like I committed publicly, but I was, but there was the un unbearable. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to run. Huh. But it doesn't matter. I knew that I would, I decided ahead of time that I'd feel this way. And I made, I made the plan. When I feel like not running, I'm going to go for a run. Interesting. Most of us do what we feel like. I don't feel like running, so I'm not going to run. If you only do what you feel like, you don't do very much because you always do the easy thing, right? So being committed to do the right thing, those first 10 days, unbearable. The second 10 days, uncomfortable. I'm like, all right, I still don't want to run, but it's like, it's not so bad. My body's kind of getting used to it. And then at some point in the, the last 10 days, I'm like, I am a runner. Like I'm a run, like this is, I'm feeling good. I like, I'm actually excited to go for a run. Uh, you know, I'm actually excited to wake up early, right? So you just got to commit for those 30 days. And if you can make it for 30 days, you can make it for 30 years. Like once you get through the, the initial growing pains and transformation, you know, uncomfortable feelings and, and the, that voice in your head that's trying to talk you into doing the easy thing. Like once you get through that for 30 days, you can stick with it forever. And we have, you know, I don't know how many thousands upon thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that have done the Miracle Morning for days, weeks, months, years, you know, when, again, 72% of them were not morning people when they started. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the therapy session, guys. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's helpful. Them. Yeah, for real. It, it is helpful. And maybe maybe one of our listeners feels the same way and has the same question sure. and, and that adds value. I'm sure. Um, what, what are uh, like big, you know, big goals for you? Like, you know, it's, it's so cool that you've, you've created this and you have something that changes people's lives. Like it's gotta be such a good position. Like you're, you're, uh, you know, getting this message out there and it's probably easy to not have questions about what you should be doing in general. Uh, but what, what are the big goals or challenges for you moving forward? Like big, big ideas or plans, things that maybe we can help with our listeners would love to kind of hear about that. Yeah, I, thank you. I appreciate this question. Um, the so when I wrote the Miracle Morning, it was just like, okay, I feel I owe it to another human being. I don't know who's going to read this. Like again, I I wasn't an author. I, I didn't have an audience. But I thought I if if one person gets the benefit that I'm getting and that you know my my coaching clients back then were getting, uh, I thought like I owe I I have a responsibility to share this practice with people. Then I wrote the book and I started getting like feedback people going oh my god it changed my life more and more and more and these were strangers that i had never met before from all around the country or the u.s and so then i i said i made a mission i go okay i'm committed to change one million lives one morning at a time i don't care how long it takes meaning for me it was like i'll sell a million books and change a million lives right um and uh it took me six years to reach that point and uh but i kept pursuing it i kept doing interviews i did everything that i could kept giving speeches and I reached a million people. And then once that happened, I go, wait, okay. So I need a, like, I need a new goal. You know, I need like, what, well, okay. I hit the goal. Like I, and I never knew I would, it was kind of like a pipe dream, you know, like 1 million. That's my whole life will be dedicated to changing a million lives. And then when I did that, I, 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 I created a new mission and it, it is, it, it is still the mission to this day because there's no number attached to it. Well, there, there is in my mind, I'll share that in a second, but the mission is to elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning and one person at a time. And that is done by each of us waking up every day, elevating our own consciousness, right? Going from being in a place of fear to a place of courage, a place of hate to a place of love, a place of insecurity to a place of confidence, right? A place of selfishness to a place of service, right? Elevating our consciousness in these ways to where we actually become such a, a light, such a, a positive productive version of ourselves that we can't help but rub off on every person that we come in contact with. I personally think the greatest gift we can give to those that we love and those that we lead is to fulfill our potential. Because by dedicating our life to fulfilling our potential, we are able to help others do the same. And so that's the mission of the Miracle Morning community is to elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time, one person at a time. The number that I you know, secretly have in, in my mind is a billion people. I feel like if I can reach a billion people with the Miracle Morning, then 
uh, that, you know, th that they're going to at least impact seven people, you know, and it's going to reach the world. And the way that I'm doing that is, you know, it's the book, The Miracle Morning. I'm still sharing it every chance I get. And then we talked earlier, the movie just came out, the documentary. We made a documentary because a friend of mine who's a filmmaker said, Hal, how are you going to elevate the consciousness of humanity when only like one or two percent of humanity reads self-help books? I went, damn, that's you got me like, I, yeah, that's a good point. How, how like and he goes, guess what? The other 98 percent, they watch film, they watch document, you know, and I'm like, I guess we're making a movie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it took us six years, six years to make the documentary. I got cancer in the middle of the documentary. I almost died. We filmed that whole journey. And, um, you know, so but everything that I do, it's really easy when you have a mission in life. I can align everything I do. It's easy to say yes and no. I said yes to this interview because this is an alignment with my mission of reaching more people and elevating consciousness. Um, right. And if it's not in alignment, it's an easy no for me, you know? So, yeah, so that's it. And, um, miracle morning.com. That's a great hub. You can check out to, you know, you can find the books there and you can find, you know, the movie link is there and all of that. And, uh, yeah, you guys, thanks for letting me share the message. And, uh, Matt, I'm, I'm hoping, man, you will take, I mean, Alex, you're already doing the miracle morning. You don't call it that. It doesn't matter. You're doing it. Uh, who cares about the name? Call it whatever you want. And Matt, man, I'm, I'm inviting you, I'm encouraging you, I'm challenging you to be an example for your audience, man. Commit to the 30-day challenge and update people, update your audience on your podcast. Like, hey, here's how it's going. Here's what I'm learning. Here's what I, you know, some roadblocks I hit. Here's how I overcame them. And uh, I think it'd be the greatest thing you can do for you and, and uh, for those that you love and, and those that you lead, brother. Yeah, I, I agree. I love it. And uh if I can't do it, hearing it from the man himself, I'm screwed. So <laughs> I, I'm going to make it happen, man. I appreciate awesome. you. We appreciate your time. Uh, we want to share the message. You're doing great things. I mean, you're, you're truly making the world a better place. So uh, thanks for what you do. We'll share it. We'll, we'll help you any way we can and, and appreciate your time. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Thank man. You. Have a good day. Thank you, Hal.